Hello, this is Mike, and today I'm going to teach you about SQL, which is an abbreviation for Structured Query Language. SQL is a very useful language for um, iterating through and looking at data in different ways. Um, and the best way to explain what you can do is kind of show you what you do in a spreadsheet. So in a spreadsheet, um, you have various elements of a spreadsheet. You have columns and you have rows. And a database is very similar in that you have columns and rows in various tables. Now tables are comparable to um, the different sheets you might have or the different documents you might have in your Excel file. Um, and the columns always have a header or a column name, right? We call this the, the header row right here in, in spreadsheets. And then you have your values that come down here. And SQL is very similar um, in that it has rows and columns, and instead of sheets, it has tables. Um, but the main difference is that these tables relate to each other. And I've always referred to um, a database as um, spreadsheets on steroids or, or crack or something because it is just amazing what you can do with a database compared to what you can do with spreadsheets. Um, there are many different types of databases out there. Um, Microsoft SQL, MySQL, Oracle, Postgres, SQLite, and um, I learned about WebSQL when I was doing this tutorial, and we'll talk about more about WebSQL in just a minute. Um, the query language itself um, comprises of a bunch of keywords and operators. It's very similar to programming, um, and uh, we'll get into that in just a second. Um, here's a few resources with the links right here. Um, on the slide deck, you can see we're going to be using the W3School SQL tutorial. Um, we're also going to be using the W3School's Web SQL database, as well as Microsoft's standard Northwind database sheet, which is just your typical go to sample database. Um, as I was just saying, there's various SQL types. Just like in programming, we have integers and doubles and decimals and strings. Um, in SQL, we have data types. Um, we have an integer. We also have a tiny int, a small int, and a big int. So an integer is kind of right in between these two, just like in some of the programming languages. And each of these takes up a different amount of size. So um, you'll want to use the appropriate type based off of um, your situation. Um, varchar is the equivalent of a string. And you can also pass in the size of how big your varchar is. Um, it's just like declaring an array and you have to specify how big it's going to be. Um, there is a variable one that can go pretty big. It's not infinite, but big enough, which is text. Um, in different SQL languages or databases have slightly different ways of implementing these. So look at your specific database when you're looking at your var chars and your text. Um, you also have a bit, which is our true or false Boolean. Um, dates and times. Um, there's a difference between date and a date time. It's whether or not you want the time component and dates and the operators that you use on dates also vary um, database to database, but they have some core functionality that we'll talk about. Um, and then you have your decimals, which um, the precision and then how many um, decimal points come after it. So those are there's a few other data types, and as you get into different databases, they even have their own. Um, but these are the core ones that are shared amongst all the databases. Um, and so now we're going to just kind of talk a little bit about um, what a database is and how we can um, write some queries and why one would want to write queries on a database. So we'll start with just a single table. So as I said, Excel is very similar to SQL or any spreadsheet program in that it puts our data into this tabular format. Um, and we have our header row right here with all of our column names, then we have all the data. And I've gone and exported Northwind's database into a Google Sheet, which is also shared. Um, so you can see we have customers, categories, employees, orders, order details, products, shippers, suppliers, um, and then a few other tabs that I'm gonna fill out um, that aren't related to the database, but more to the assignments we'll be doing. Um, so you can see we have a lot of data here. And if one were to want to find out how many customers or list the customers, we'll start with just listing the customers that we have in the USA. 
Um, in Excel, you'd probably highlight these. You'd do a sort by, sort by the country, and then you could kind of group them all and copy and paste them out. It's probably the way you'd go about doing that. Well, we're going to go over to the um, W3School SQL engine, and we're going to restore our database here. And you can see we have a database, and this database is the exact same one. I copied it out from here and brought it into the sheet. So we have our customers table, our categories, employees, all this stuff. Um, so we're going to grab everything from our customers, and then we're going to use the keyword. Oh, well, let me talk about the syntax a little bit more. So let's we'll start from scratch. So the first statement is the select star from. And I read this as select all from. And it's very common and best practice to capitalize the keywords in SQL. So you'll see that quite a bit. Again, it's insensitive, but best practice is to capitalize the keywords um, so that you can read it a little bit cleaner. And then our next statement we're going to use it is we need to tell it the table name. So these are all of our table names right here. So we're going to select all from customers. And we're going to hit this run SQL. And you can see it goes and grabs us all of our customers. Now, what if you didn't want to grab all of the columns? Maybe you only want to see the customer name and address. You can specify the columns that you want to see just by their column name. If I run this statement, Again, my results another table it still has all 91 rows, but it only is like we're only looking at the customer name and the address. And so that's the difference between this select star versus the column name. And so it's shortcut, obviously, to use the star, but um, I'd recommend you go ahead and write your column names because when you do that, you'll get the exact data you're looking for. Um, and it will just make your total return value payload be a little bit smaller. So the next work we're going to look at in SQL, that's great. We could have done that in Excel. We have everything. Um, we're going to look at the where clause. So our next keyword is where, and this is where it becomes fun. I originally said I wanted to know which um, of our customers were in the country of the United States. So I'll write the country column equals the USA. And so you can see that SQL really reads a lot like English. Select customer name and the address from customers where the country is equal to USA. So when I run this, my number of results drops down to 13. And if I go in back and put a little shortcut star in there and run it, you can see that my country is all USA. So that's a really useful operator. Um, what if we wanted to get the ones that are in the USA and, um, I don't know, and their city is Boise. We could say and city equals Boise. And we could run it. Oh, and I spelled something wrong. So I said that SQL's case insensitive. I found that the W3 schools web SQL 1, when you use the equals operator, is not for whatever reason. Um, so I had to match them exactly. So there we go. We got one record. Had we had more customers in Boise, we would see them all right here. So you can really start to refine your data and start to look at smaller data sets. Um, and so that's where a lot of the power of these filters start to come through. Maybe we want to see everybody in the USA or we want to see the ones that are in Mexico. We run that SQL, we can see we get a list of everybody in the USA and Mexico. Pretty simple. There's shorthand for that in SQL, um, or you can say rather than this, and I'm going to put parentheses. When I start using ORs, I like to use parentheses to group things together because it, it follows the regular order of operations with ORs and ANDs and parentheses, and it's just best practice to kind of start putting parentheses in when you start using ORs. Um, so we can talk about another operator, which is the in operator. So if we were doing a bigger list, we wouldn't want to write that country or country or country because that gets a little bit long. It's also not so clean. Um, let's see if we have anybody in Canada. Canada. We do. We do have a few in Canada. So you can do a comma-separated list of values, 
and that in operator is the equivalent of a bunch of ors that are strung together. And so you can do country in that and customer ID is less than 43. And so when I run these things, I always like to visualize what do I expect to happen to this data. So I'll go look at this data and I'll say, well, when I run this, everybody who's greater than or equal to 43 should drop out. So we should just get back to these guys right here. So I'll go ahead and run that. And you can see that that's exactly what happened. So I always question and go and look at the data as I'm kind of refining through it and say, are the results what I expect, more or less? When you're dealing with large data sets, it's a little bit more challenging, but you kind of got a gut feeling and you can tell if it's working. Um, and when I'm writing really complex queries, I like to get a little smaller set to work on too. Um, the in operator, we did that. So I introduced these ones right here equals, less than, greater than, greater than or equal, less than or equal. This one's a little goofy. It's not equal. Um, the many programming languages you'll see not equal written like that. In SQL it's like it's not greater than and it's not less than. So I guess that's the equivalent of not. So back in our country we could say where the country is not the USA. And this is going to give us a list of all of our international clients. So you can start to use this not operator. Um, case the, even in SQL, the um, strings have value. So I can say greater than the USA. And we can see that Venezuela is the only country greater than the USA because it's greater than a U. It's, it's doing an alphabetical sort. If I just put the U and then we can start to get the UK and the USA because they're all greater than the U because of the S and you just need to know how to compare strings so that takes us into another thing but um, you can you can write queries that way um, and the last one is you can do like we can do like um, a U and this will get us all the, and this is the wildcard character in SQL the percent sign so this will get us everything that starts with the letter U and you can see we get the UK and the USA um, and the final one from this list is between. So between, you might expect, we can say between A and M. Which gives us all of these ones. And the between is the equivalent of writing the country is greater than or equal to A and the country is less than or equal to M. So these two. 49 rows, run it, 49 rows are the equivalent. So between is just another shorthand, kind of like in was shorthand for or. You can use between rather than using a greater than and a less than or equal to. And then finally, what we're going to teach you on this first one is the order by function. Um, you can tell that we have our nice list of customers. Um, we can get rid of this completely. And in Excel, we would highlight this and sort by country, right? We can also do that in SQL. We can say order by column name at the very end. So there we can see that the data comes back sorted by a country. Defaults to ascending, ASC for ascending, or you can do descending, which is the inverse. So we'll get V up to A. So a lot of it is just memorizing the keywords and where they're applied and the various filters. Um, and then you can just play with it and you always look at it and say, all right, well, let's get all of our customers less than 50. And then our record set goes down and we can look at our ID. It's now out of order um, because we're reordering it by country. And the default always is just to order it by the first thing. Customer ID backwards, forwards. So run a few queries and, and play with this data set. Um, and you can use those operators to to see the various things that you can do. And you can run it on any of these tables. Right now we're just doing single page, so we could look at the everything from the products table. Um, maybe it looks like we have this thing called a category ID, so we could say where the category ID equals one. Um, there's all the products there. And we could order it by product name, 
looks like a good one to do. And it's alphabetical, or we could order it by price. And we can see, okay, there's the cheapest, but maybe we want to see the most expensive first, so we can order it that way. Um, so SQL can be used to quickly manipulate and refine your data sets, give you some filtering, and it's just a very powerful language, and we're going to continue to explore it more um, in the next few slides.